Ladies, gentlemen, and others, it is finally almost here. After half a decade of speculation and two years of waiting, the Super Mario Bros. movie is finally almost here. And I'm just so happy that people are genuinely excited for this movie. Not even ironically, people are honestly expecting this movie to be good, and I'm expecting it to be good. Cause just look at it! The only criticism I'm hearing right now about the movie is that I just don't think it's ever going to be truly faithful to the games with Chris Pratt as Mario. And to those people, shut up man, god. Mario has had other voice actors before Charles Martinet. Chris Pratt as Mario is perfectly fine. And to say that it's somehow not loyal to the games just because of that, you're clearly exposing yourself because you've obviously never seen what a movie that actually disrespects its source material even looks like because that's exactly what the original Super Mario Bros movie from 1993 was. A movie that's far more insane than I think people remember. Everybody has at least heard of this movie, but I think as time marches on, there have been less and less people who've actually sat down and watched the entire thing from start to finish. And that's probably by design. I was only able to catch it myself when I was 8 because it would occasionally run on TV every now and then. That doesn't happen anymore. It hasn't been on TV for over a decade and it sure as shit ain't showing up on Netflix or Hulu or any streaming service, especially after this new movie drop. Because of this, younger generations have never been exposed to this movie and thus have no context as to how actually that shit insane it really is. So that's what I want to do. This is kind of my effort to, in a sense, preserve this movie before it gets completely buried by the new one. We are going to sit here together and watch the original Super Mario Bros. movie together. And also, this will help you give a much bigger appreciation for the new movie. A long, long time ago, the Earth was ruled by dinosaurs. They were big, so not a lot of people went around hassling them. This episode of Walking with Dinosaurs is narrated to you by Tony Soprano and animated in MS Paint. You know, it just don't get no better than this. Yeah, Duke, I've really been turning my life around. I've been sober for a year. The girl I liked said yes to a date. I scored my dream job. Man, nothing could ever ruin my day. Goodbye, dinosaurs! But what if the dinosaurs weren't all destroyed? What if the impact of that meteorite created a parallel dimension where the dinosaurs continue to thrive and evolve into intelligent, vicious, aggressive beings? Grandpa, have you been reading Facebook conspiracy theories again? So this movie opens up in Brooklyn 20 years ago apparently with a woman dropping off her baby at the steps of a church. Because this is what happens when you ban abortions. Yo, we can make the biggest fucking omelette with this. Where's the rock? Opa. Yes, you heard that right. This is our version of Bowser. Or King Cooper as he was called back then. He looks like Donald Trump if he combed his toupee with a corn harvester. <laughs> Damn, so much for my omelette. I mean, we still could. Joyce! No! Not again! Mario brought us plumbing. No leak too small. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Don't touch it. No, no. It's not a big problem. Just leave it to the professionals. When I looked around, I was, I was somewhere okay. in the universe. Okay. We'll be right there. Luigi, we got a broken dishwasher at the Riverfront uh -huh. Cafe. You know what that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got Mike. Me and Golden broke Mario. We're already there. Anyone else remember those toys and did this exact same thing? Yeah. <laughs> So if you ever wondered where the idea that Mario is from Brooklyn even came from, it was not from this movie actually. It was actually started by Captain Lou Albino in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Drugs can kill, and 
die if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Up until then, no one ever gave Mario an actual backstory, but Louis here filled that in by basing it off of his own personal life story of coming from a family of Italian immigrants living in New York. So one of the writers clearly took that concept and co-opted it for the movie. I say one of the writers, because this film had seven fucking writers, Jesus Christ. What are you doing? I don't know, Mario, just trust me. I got a good feeling about this, Ali, but I don't know. My instincts tell me this will be faster, but my breathing, big brother, we'll get there. Luigi! You know, I read that sea turtles navigate thousands of miles on instinct. Not in New York traffic, they don't. Well, what are you complaining about? Come on, we're here, aren't we? You're getting worse. I'm, I'm getting worse. How did we get into sea turtles? Faster, what I tell you, huh? <laughs> it's a miracle we made it alive. I thought you didn't believe in miracles, Mr. Tough Guy, huh? I will say, out of all of the decisions that were made in this movie, I genuinely believe that Bob Hoskins and John Liguizamo as Mario and Luigi was perfect casting. And I'm personally kind of fond of the type of dynamic they have in this film. Absolutely nothing like the games, but we still never see the brothers interact as, well, actual brothers. Maybe the new movie will change that. Brooklyn's largest construction projects has been ordered shut down as university students continue their search for dinosaur bones. So that they can sell them on the Chinese black market to be grounded up into dick pills. Who's in charge of this hole? I'm the boss here. By the way, this is Daisy. Yeah, they got Daisy in the story instead of Peach. Which is crazy to think that Daisy got to appear in a movie before Peach did. So to summarize everything so far, Daisy is that baby we saw in the intro, and she grew up to become a hippie and an archaeology student, whose dig site is being harassed by a corporate CEO because he's rich and has nothing better to do, and she's being stalked by these guys who want to capture her for Koopa but keep failing because, well, just look at how they dress. Luigi, I know it's 1993, but you should probably stop staring at her with the sex offender eyes. Dude, even Ken would feel uncomfortable. I've got a few problems, but... Well, you know, we, we got a van. <laughs> Luigi, that's not going to make any woman feel any more comfortable. I overheard the name was Daisy. It's, you know, I haven't heard that name around here. It's really nice, too. It's like, no, I have heard it because it's like the flower and everything. But it's not like I hang around the flower shops or nothing like that. Okay. What my brother is trying to say is he doesn't know what to say. But he has offered you a ride. And if it would help you out, please step into the van. Man, everyone needs a wingman like Mario. That might not be a bad idea. Okay, thanks. I thought it was broken. I fixed it. You know where you're going? It's just ahead. What is this? Is this your, your office or something? Doesn't it give you the creeps? Well, it's more like a home. I, I feel, I don't know, comfortable down here. Comfortable? Okay. Y yeah, I think that would be anyone's reaction to that statement. Maybe these two are good together. They trade awkward moments like their Pokemon cards. These are all strange new species. Look at this one. The way the bones fit here and the opposable thumb, it's almost as if... He was a monster trying to be a human being. Oh, so like Jeff Bezos. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. Are we still watching a Mario movie or the setup for a porn scene? Did I accidentally pop in my copy of Digging Down Into Bone Town? Don't question my kinks. Mario! Scabelli's flooding the site! We need your help! Scabelli? Yeah. Strap your belt on, kid. We're going in. Daisy, where are you? Daisy! Come on, let's Come on. go this way. No, no! No! Come on, let's go this way. No, it's this way. That's the echo. How do you know? I've been listening to pipes all my life. Come on. Okay. Daisy! You turned into a shitty special effect. No, Luigi, forget it. Gotta go with it. Forget it, rock! 
Look down there! Red Luigi! I can't believe he's this desperate for pussy. I wonder how much of the budget went into this one effect, and how much was spent on the crack they had to smoke to write it. What is this place? There she is! Come on! Come on, let's go! You're hurting me! I'm gonna kill him! No, you're not gonna kill him! Not if I get that place! I'm gonna break every bone in their body, and then I'm gonna kill him! <laughs> Holy shit. You don't... you don't wanna fuck with Mario. Yes, this is the Mushroom Kingdom. It's not, you know, this. It's instead the Great Valley version of Night City. I bet you weren't expecting the Mario movie to be about the bros being isekai'd into Blade Runner, now did ya? This is crazy! We went under the river, but th this can't be Manhattan! Where is this place? I don't know, I ain't been to Manhattan a couple of weeks. Must have been a bad couple of weeks! Okay, so I know I've been twisting this movie's nipples and all, but legit, I'm actually really fond of this setting ever since I was a kid. This movie has such a distinct twist on the cyberpunk city that I have never seen replicated anywhere else. It's a lot more grungy than your typical night cities. So many cyberpunk worlds say they're oppressive, but they don't actually feel it because they're still depicted as cool, slick, and high tech. But this place feels like an actual society that's decaying. Everything is sparking, the environment is rusty, and everything is falling apart and is in shambles. There's this goopy string that's everywhere. It makes it feel like this entire city is inside a giant carcass. In fact, this webbing goes so far to sell the feeling that this is a twisted alien world completely divorced from our own reality. This feels like a more genuine crossover between cyberpunk and fantasy, than Shadowrun ever achieved. This nightmarish realm feels like a heavy metal music video. Which makes sense when you realize that the director specialized in music videos before working on this movie. In fact, right before they were hired to do this movie, their previous directorial role was for the TV series Max Headroom, which is another story taking place in a futuristic dystopia. So you see, things are actually starting to click together. The only piece that's still missing is, why is all of this in a fucking Mario movie? Are you boys new here in town? You know, boys, it's very dangerous here in this neighborhood. You uh -huh. shouldn't wander around without a weapon. Yeah. You got one? No. Get him on, suckers! <laughs> oh, Koopa coins! I need Koopa coins, you labels! <laughs> let me go! What are you doing? Let me go! <laughs> You know what? I suddenly don't care anymore. This movie's awesome. 65 million years. We've been exiled here after the meteorite struck while mammals roam free in the other dimension. Well, not for long. And the Princess Stacy. And I'll finally be able to merge our world with theirs and get rid of the mammals. Koopa, you really don't have to explain your villain plan every single time I enter the room. Why, wow, it's a hobby of mine. Ain't got no water anywhere. Food's bad. Slow's the air. Got no resources. And a great big stupa. All because of the evil king. Koopa. Oh, by the way, this is Toad. Yeah. You still want to say this was out of left field? Daisy? Daisy? Daniela? Daisy! Wait, Daniela? Okay, so I didn't show this scene earlier to you guys, but there was a scene where Luigi invited Daisy to a double date with Mario and not Peach, but Danielle? Come on, it was right there! She's even in pink! You couldn't even name a Pauline either, but Daniela? Mario, how many hoes do you have? You boys ain't from around here, are you? Brooklyn! <laughs> Okay, no bullshit, I freaking love the vehicle designs of this film. With the exposed engines that spark like it's a 4th of July firecracker, 
the plows on the police cars and the Charlie cables on the back. God, this entire aesthetic of this place is such a fucking mood. Why has no one else done this? Hey, you Name. Mario. Last name. Mario. Okay, what's your name? Luigi. Luigi, Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. Okay, look, how many Marios are there between the two of you? There's three. It's, it's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Yep, you heard that right. This was the first time we heard the Mario Bros confirm their last name, which is Mario. I guess we should have seen that coming since it was literally in the title, but you may have noticed that this movie actually established a lot of things that would end up becoming canon later in the franchise. This movie was the first time the bros were to be, be from Brooklyn, the first time we see Luigi and Daisy paired up as a couple, and yes, the very premise of the story is Definitely where the new movie got the idea of Mario being warped into a different world to embark on an adventure. In fact, it's worth pointing out that while Mario was a character invented by the Japanese, a majority of its actual backstory and characterization were actually created by Americans. It was an American artist that first drew Mario with those iconic white gloves. It was the cartoon that established Luigi's cowardly personality. And I have no doubts that the new movie is going to continue this tradition, especially when it comes to the characterization of Peach and Toad. I have a strong feeling the movie is going to define what these characters' personality is going to be from here on out. Because let's face it, Peach is still very much a token character. And this new movie is looking like it's going to finally add some flavor to her personality. Hey yo Mario, look at grew an inch. Hey, what's that? What's that with? Oh, oh no. Is it just me, or was this what it felt like getting your yearbook photos taken? How, how, how? Sitting here in a cramped detention. With brothers from another dimension. What did, what did you mean, an, another dimension? You know, according to history, a long time ago, big meteorite came and blasted our universes into parallel dimensions. How is it that regular schlubs in this world are well educated on facts like this? Yet in our world, we still have people who believe the Earth is flat. What a lousy kingdom. Ever since Koopa took over. And you, Koopa, you're a lousy leader. Simon, de evolve him now. You may think of evolution as an upward process. The evolution, of course, works the opposite way. Back to simpler forms. Can become Goomba. Yes, you heard that right. These are Goombas. I mean, I can kind of see it if I squint really hard and have my eyes whacked with a baseball bat. Swing! Okay, keep swinging! Whoa. I'm swinging! I'm swinging! Yeah. Hang on! Let me guess, are those going to be called our fire flowers? Alright, in all seriousness, I do find it a cool aesthetic touch that this world doesn't have guns but just flamethrowers that shoot out fireballs. Almost like they're a primitive version of a laser gun. It's awesome. What are we gonna do? Number one, we steal this car. Right. Number two, I'm driving. All right. What's the starter on this thing? I gotta think about this, Mario Rooney. I can't believe you can do that. Cause from sitting on my butt all day playing video games, that's why. Boo! Boo! Let's hit the bridge! Man, if Mario Kart had existed earlier, this would have been the best time to toss in a reference like tossing shells at the cops or using banana peels to spin them out. 
Like, I know, this is far divorced from the source material already, but I can still see opportunities to toss in a few dry bones here and there. Okay, this might be a crappy Mario movie, but if this was billed as a gritty reboot of Wacky Races, I'd totally stand for it. Leaving power grid, powering down. I can't stop this thing! I can't see where I'm going! Look out, Mario! <laughs> so, I kind of skipped over this scene, but all of this stringy stuff is actually fungus that's being grown by the original king who was turned into a giant pile of mushrooms by being de-evolved by Koopa when he usurped the throne and took over the kingdom. So now the king fights back by overgrowing fungus all over the city and even using it to try and help the brothers. So skipping ahead a bit, Daisy finds out that she's the princess, her father is in fact the mushroom king, and we're introduced to... Yoshi is a pet of the royal family. Yes, this is Yoshi. And no, nobody rides him. Not that they could with him being so tiny, but they could have easily used a de-evolver gun to turn, turn him into a giant T-Rex and ride him that way. Because something like that does happen later in the film and they don't do it. It's... You are so fresh and so clean. Unfortunately, these lines aren't much better than what Luigi was using earlier. Where's Daisy? Oh, no, no, no. Where's the rocks? What's with this rock? The rock is a piece of a special meteorite which was chipped off upon impact 65 million years ago. Yes, you see, once this rock is reinserted into the meteorite, our two dimensions will reunite and we will become one. Then our cousin Koopa shall become ruler of both our worlds. <laughs> <laughs> now, what if we get you the rock? Will you get us Daisy? Yes, I think that proposal would mutually benefit both our parties. Yes, yes, okay, now, hand over the rack. Someone took it. Big Bertha, the pal's at the boom boom bar! Yeah. For those not in the know, this is Big Bertha from the games. You know, a lot has been said about this movie over the years but I don't think enough credit is given to how good the effects can be for its time. Most of them. Isn't this a little bit feminine? Yes, I know, it was my ex-wife's. But you wear this stuff? <laughs> yes, on occasion we have a date. What date? She is where? Up there. Leave this to me. No woman can resist the charm of a marriage. Mario, how many hoes do you have? The name's Mario. I'm your main man. Maybe she's a little shy. Will you hit me again? I've never seen such fluidity. The way your knuckles crunch as you smash them into my face. Dance with me. I'll hit you all these night. So, fun fact about this scene. One of the original drafts had this scene take place in a strip club, and they hired actual local North Carolina strippers for this scene. But then the producers caught wind of what was going on and immediately ordered a rewrite, which is why it was changed to a dance club and how we got scenes like this. I 
Rewrites of this film were happening literally day by day to the point that the cast stopped memorizing their lines altogether and then just winged it with whatever they got. It's honestly impressive their performances are still so enjoyable given that everyone had no rehearsal time, but it also explains the widely inconsistent wackiness of its tone. Yes, they not only included the stompers from Mario Bros 3, but they also used them to explain why the bros are good at jumping. Fucking wild. Yes, but how are we gonna get up, huh? Like Mario's. So we're at the final stretch of the Mario Bros movie for the actual Mario Bros to look like the Mario Bros. For some reason, this was something a lot of video game movies did back in the day. Iconic characters wouldn't start looking like their iconic characters until the movie was almost over. And even then, they still don't look quite right. They're not even in overalls. It's like so many of these films were ashamed to be video game movies, so they did everything they could to distance themselves from them. So in this universe, every electronic interface ever is controlled using a Wiimote. Truly dystopic times if I've ever seen it. Listen, I know this is gonna sound a little strange, but I want you to meet my father, Dad. Oh man. Oh. Well, it's an honor to meet you, sir, and a pleasure. And I just, I just want to thank you for all your help. And you thought meeting your girlfriend's parents was awkward? Mighty home mammals! Our heroes, everyone. Ah, the chance was right there to jump stomp on a Goomba. Honey, listen. Get that mattress. The Goomba mattress. Take it over there. The Goomba mattress. We're going for a little ride. This is the most aerodynamic mattress I've ever seen. Mavioroni! Too late, humans! Looks like I win. I don't know who's less competent, our heroes or our villains. What? Take my belt! Trust the fungus. That's what I was told the first time I popped some shrooms. I'm gonna be honest, from here on out, the movie kind of drags on. The finale is surprisingly dull. Um, Mario, shouldn't you be running too? Based on everyone's reaction, you got a walking nuke on your hands. Uh, uh, oh, oh, never mind. Messed up again, mammal. 
So much for the producers still trying to salvage this as a kid's film. Be that Devo gun! <laughs> Monkey! <laughs> so an entire crowd just watched a man essentially get horribly disfigured and their reaction is to laugh. Wait, the guy's a rich CEO of a corporation. Fuck him. A monkey out of you, plumber. Trust the fungus. <laughs> Why was the spinning effect added? <laughs> You might be wondering what happened to that bar bomb Mario placed. Oh no, he turned into a rubber mask! Hooray! <laughs> we still have no solution to our resource shortages, our systemic issues, or our corrupting infrastructure. But hey, at least the guy we don't like is dead. <laughs> Damn, they wasted no time. I can't. You want to stay? Until we can get things settled here and I can get to know my father. You know, Luigi, you could just stay there with her. I do too, but... Uh, of course you don't. I mean, you jump through dimensions for some tail, but you won't stay there for the tail. That makes sense. But wait! Luigi, Mario! Daisy! You gotta come with me, I need your help. You're never gonna believe this. I believe it. You do? And that's how it ends. Yeah, for some reason, this was something else that a lot of video game movies did back in the day. And that was the Super Mario Bros. movie. Holy shit. This was a lot more fun than I was expecting. I haven't seen this movie start to finish since I was 8, which was, shit, 20 years ago. God, I'm so fucking old. So, you probably have a lot of questions. Like, why did this happen? How did this happen? Who allowed this to happen? As I alluded to earlier, every single decision made about this movie was a result of an absolutely chaotic production period. From pre-production all the way to the editing phase, just about anything that could go wrong in the making of a movie did go wrong. You got studio meddling, incompetent directors who did not know how to communicate with the crew, on-set injuries and even on-set drinking, a script that none of the actors signed up for. I honestly recommend the Gaming Historian documentary about the behind the scenes making of this movie. It is fascinating stuff. But predictably, the result of all of this is a really shitty Mario adaptation. But even trying to judge the movie on its own merits and not as an adaptation, I can understand why some people would say this was one of the worst movies of all time. Now, in spite of all of that, or maybe even because of all that, I actually do understand why this film has had a growing cult following over the years. And I consider myself among them now because I actually do love this movie. 
yes, it's a train wreck, but it's one of those train wrecks where you just cannot take your eyes off of it. It is thoroughly entertaining from start to finish. But when you do watch it from start to finish, you actually start to realize that there could have been a good movie in here. If it was completely divorced itself from the Mario brand, and allowed itself to stand out as a completely original story and property, and had more wiggle room to do its own thing than to appease a committee, there really could have been something here, because the world is just so distinct, and it can give you some genuine laughs. And it is very clear that, in spite of everything, there were men and women behind this film that were doing their best to create the best possible product with what they were given with. And the end result of all these clashing elements is a movie that is so wholly unique. There is no other movie like the Mario movie. And the fact that it was managed to be completed at all, that is something that should be cherished and treasured. And that's what I hoped to do today. There, were, there are too many good ideas and too much effort put into this just to be squandered and buried by history. And the fact that the people who worked on this had to suffer so hard to get done to begin with, I feel like that would have been the greatest disservice to them of all. So I wanted to do my part to introduce this movie to a new generation, with a hope that someday someone will be able to take the positive merits of this movie and turn it something even better. I mean, I would have loved to do that. Like, watching this movie has had me so inspired with so many unique ideas. But unfortunately, I'm just too bogged down with so many other projects right now. I mean, if I was able to make my creative efforts a full-time job, I, maybe I'd be able to. But um, I'll just let y'all put the pieces together on how to make that happen. So to sum everything up, yes, this is a bad movie. Yes, this is a terrible Mario movie. But as a lifelong Mario fan, I still love it. I'm not even sure if I can call it a guilty pleasure, because it's not even ironic. I genuinely do love this movie. If you want to check it out for yourself, it is still available on DVDs and Blu-rays, among other methods to watch it. So go check it out for yourself, make your own judgments. I hope you guys had fun today, and I'll see y'all at the premiere of the new Mario movie.